In right. reality, when you are inconsistent, that means you have a chance to play amazingly. Well, you also have a chance to not play so amazingly. So if we see that Ryung today, I, I think Ryung can take this. But I do think he is still the underdog. I absolutely agree, man. I think Ryung is the player that will... He's the player that, once he gets, like, a couple of losses under his belt, he kind of just plows through it or he collapses. And that's what you were talking about with him being a little bit inconsistent. It almost always happens that he gets backed into a corner and then he shows us his most impressive games. So we'll see. Does he take game number one or is he going to allow himself to be caged in a corner? Um, Classic, definitely a player that can can go either way um in our earlier research we saw that classic was definitely favoring like a blink stalker type build is that still part of the meta or do you think he's going to be shifting to to some, some other style i think it's definitely still a great option to open with you really mm -hmm. I, I still think stargate's a slightly better option personally but mm -hmm. after all i am not classic yeah well he typically favors like an oracle into blink stalker um followed by a third base is is that kind of what you're talking about or kind of i think it's i i was talking more of like an add up phoenix where you kind of control the mid game but uh -huh. honestly getting to control the mid game you don't really get the control with the blink stalker but you do get to completely sort of defend yourself there's not a whole lot of terran can really do to pressure you once those blink stalkers are really up and running unless you of course fall asleep at the wheel which I mean, every Terran's kind of hoping you don't notice the drop, right? <laughs> exactly, man. I think uh, drops are probably the one thing that characterizes this matchup most, would you say? Yeah, I think I think we're seeing a really nice shift in Legacy of the Void. Nice depending on who you are, I guess. A lot of people may not be in the biggest favor of this, but really Terran's become such an aggressive race with drops early on in really all the matchups. Yeah. Um, looks like Ryung um, is... <laughs> Looks like uh, Young's the type of player who uh, does want to be more aggressive in like pretty much every situation. So I wouldn't be surprised to see like drops out of him super early. Do you think he'll be employing like Widowmind drops or will it be more of like a bio style? I think he's more of a Widowmind drop guy, but mm -hmm. we'll see. I mean, I what I, one thing I really like about Ryan, he is, is just he's been playing for so long that his play is pretty solid. And speaking of some, uh, speaking of Ryan, in the bottom right, mm -hmm. he is one of the oldest players still competing in Code S to this day. In the blue, it is Ryan. And in the top left-hand side of the Iron Ladder Edition, he's the Red Protoss. It's classic. All right, so so far we're seeing pretty much mostly macro builds but the one thing to note mm -hmm. is that Ryung has opted for three barracks instead of a factory he's actually completely gasless now that i notice it so this is kind of a weird opening i mean normally you see mm -hmm. gas so you can get factories normally you see gas so you can get reapers or reactors he's actually just only got barracks so this means no stem pack it means uh pretty much he has to go for a kill but he's not going to have like the teeth behind that is that right yeah, I mean, he really can't ever... Like, you really just can't pressure that stem. But, like I said, he's gotten these three barracks up. These marines mm -hmm. should be able to handle whatever comes out of the Stargate from Classic. Yeah, I definitely uh, see the Stargate coming out. Uh, do you think this is Oracle or Phoenix? I I would assume with the current meta it'd be Oracle, but mm -hmm. Phoenix not really being a surprise, to be honest. All right. Fair enough, man. We'll see what pops here in just one second. The Adepts are moving across the map. And, uh, yeah, we've got more Marines in production. Slow build. The Oracle is on the way. Yeah, I, like I said, though, if you look at how Ryung's opened, he's got himself a good number of Marines, even without, like, even without a reactor, even without, like, building this. Because he opened Gasless, he had enough for three barracks and also, like, plenty of Marines. So this is actually a kind of cool opening. You don't see a whole lot of this. You only see the factory so you can get the pressure going. But it looks like he's opting for a very defensive build this game. Yeah, stem pack is on the way. He's also got the plus one. Um, more than likely, the plus one infantry attacks going to be in production. The engineering bay just finished factory starting. Or do you think that eBay was more for the missile turrets, bud? Ah, there's the missile turret. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty standard. Stargate's so standard in this game mm -hmm. that you're going to normally just build missile turrets blind. Like, he hasn't even scouted the Stargate, but it's not a bad option. Gotcha. 
All right, like I said, man, I'm a Zerg player. This is all uh, all a new situation for me. But guys, as uh, I am learning this matchup, your players in chat can as well. I know we've got a uh, new player from Company of Heroes joining us in chat. If you guys could give a big warm welcome to Danny. He's a new member of our staff who wants to learn all about StarCraft and will be casting for us in future events. So thanks, Danny. Thanks for joining us, man. Uh, so this is something we kind of saw Neeb doing a lot. Where you mm -hmm. build two oracles out of the Stargate and then immediately transition into Glaive Adepts, which is what I'm assuming that this Wild Council is for. But, like you said, Three Young really does like this Blink Stalker play, or rather, the Classic really likes this Blink Stalker play, so there's a good chance this might just be Blink. Yeah, it's possible, man. Um, when do you see, like, Robos and stuff come out for this uh, particular opener? So really, the one kind of downside of this build is that Robos are actually kind of late with it, because you really delay it in order to get this early adept pressure out, mm -hmm. where you get these, you get two oracles, you can kind of pressure on the map, mm -hmm. then you get a bunch of adepts, and you kind of pressure with that. It's like a little one-two punch, right. while you're slowly teching up behind it. Because really, mm -hmm. if there's oracles on the map, the Terran's going to have a hard time, it's going to be hard-pressed to really want mm -hmm. to move out. Well, is an area of effect, like, robo units kind of where people want to go with this, so isn't delaying it kind of rough, or...? Well, because he has the Twilight Council, he's probably just going to go into Templar. Obviously, he's got this pretty fast third base, which means he'll have a pretty quick gas. And you can see another advantage of this build, he's just now getting his Mothership Core, because you really don't need it, because you're already so pinning the Terran back in his base, you don't need mm -hmm. the overcharges. Nice. Well, we do have a Stasis Trap going off, but no real follow-up on that from Classic. Looks like uh, Ryan going to be forced to, you know... M move back to his rally, but he will be reinforcing that shortly. He might actually try to get this with the oracles. I think he's being a little greedy. Yeah, just going for the revelation. I was mm -hmm. afraid he was going to turn on the pulsar beams. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, that would be rough, because Stimpak has point. Yeah, I'm actually a little worried about this push from Ryung. Adam's mm -hmm. blades are going to finish pretty much right when he gets there, if he does push in. He's only got one medevac, and Ryung's got plus one and Glaive's finishing very soon. In addition to that, Classic's got two proxy pylons, and he can totally take advantage of Ryung's out-of-position army. Yeah, he's even blocking the third right now, just being annoying, but there is a small force there that will block that. Mm-hmm. All right. That, that's a dead pylon, man, but there is the Adept warp in. See yeah, how this fares for Classic, as uh, Ryung still a little bit hesitant to push up into that ramp. Yeah, this is one of the big advantages of opening Oracle over Phoenix, is you can mm -hmm. constantly see what's going on. Yeah, Revelation. Like, you know exactly like when the push hacks. is coming. Yeah. Guys, Blizzard didn't even stop map hacks on ladder. They just made it, like, doable, easy for everyone. Yeah, as long as you have energy, right? Well, the yep. Adept's warping in now, and we do have uh, the SCVs getting targeted down. Some of the Marines getting killed off. you got to be careful to focus uh, the SCVs with these Adepts. But Classic is uh, also microing here at the third base, trying to get a great position on the bio army, but most of his army is out of position. His reinforcements coming in from the natural, but a lot of these pylons are going down mid overcharge. Warpin coming in as well. He is still obliterating uh, SCVs with these adepts, but the Warpin does uh, happen, and the uh, adepts knocking back most of the bio army widow mines getting picked off as well cam what do you think of that uh that engagement that was a lot of really really small things that made mm -hmm. that fight really good because you saw classic had one of his uh stasis wards triggered right and ryung scanned to kill the other one and classic knew there were two widow mines and so only one of them went off so he baited it with the oracle that didn't have any energy and then mm -hmm. jumped in for real on the Terran army and as a result, Classic getting a pretty good engage there, winning that fight, as well as killing, like, 20 workers. Like, it's going to be rough for him to come back from this. So basically, he needs to kill his opponent now, because late game's out of the question? I don't think late game's out of the question, but he kind of mm -hmm. needs to pick, is he going to just stay defensive, or is he going to try to keep pressure on, and just kind of try to get what he can? How does the Terran play defensive here? Is he just going to bank on mules? Well, actually, never mind. There's a Doom Drop, bro. Oh man, this Doom Drop getting absolutely obliterated. Stalker's in position. He still has a good number of units, though. Oh, loses most of the Stalkers. Only one managing to get away. The bottom row. Uh, that pylon depowering most of those gateways and the Stargate as well. Kills off the Stargate, but there's a little bit of a harassment force in Ryung's natural. However, great concave here for Classic. It looks like Classic is going to knock most of that Doom Drop back. Um, not really able to equalize the worker count there, Cam. 
Yeah, but he does at least depower that. He did lose a kind of decent meta back count. You see, Classic is just relentless with this mm -hmm. added pressure. Dude, he's only got three adept or uh, three uh, meta backs left, and uh, all those adepts were pretty much uh, disposable. Um, he's got the four left, but you know, once those die off, he's not going to want those anymore. Yeah, and this is actually one thing I really love about Classic's play is whenever Classic sort of senses he can do a lot of damage. He will just continually go for the throat with it. Like you just see, he's constantly warping in Adams. He's constantly like, there's still no third base for Ryung. Like, this is a nine minute, like nine and a half minute third at best, and there's not even a worker here to start it yet. Like, oh, it actually is a third base. That's a fourth base that was piling block. I'm sorry, but yeah. Well, thermal lance about three quarters of the way done now. So classic in one of the best positions I think a Protoss could ask for at ten minutes in the game. Yeah, it's a little awkward, because Ryung really wants to build Liberators right now. He really wants to build Medivacs right now, because he's lost a bunch of Medivacs, and he wants to have Liberators. Right. But you really need Vikings to deal with these Colossi. Like, the Liberators can kind of do an okay job, but they're really not going to do a good enough job. Three Observers on the map are making it so that Ryung's not going to be able to attack from any angle without Classic being in the perfect position. And we see that right here, the choke point definitely there to favor classic Ryung being forced back, Revelation going off, so even more map hacks, and while this is happening, uh, these Adepts still trying to put pressure on this third base. Great blinks in here, Liberator getting taken off. Cam, it looks like some great force fields here, the Marauders getting trapped on the other side of that, but choosing to pull back here, I'm not sure if this is the best choice. Could he be killing off these Marauders, Cam? He's just playing it safe. I think he knows how ahead he is, and he really just wants to make sure he's not taking a stupid fight that's going to get him killed. Fair enough. I mean, like, if you take a bad fight here, that's basically the only way he gets out of the driver's seat. But right now, he is, like, full pedal to the metal. He is mm -hmm. driving right for that finish line. Ryum is going to have to Tokyo Drift. Oh, and great blinks underneath the Liberators, which out of picked off at this point. Colossi coming in, killing off most of the Bio Widow Mines. Did manage to kill off a lot of the Gateway unit, but Ryung losing most of his army. Going to be tapping out. GG is called Classic Up 1-0. What happened there, Cam? How did Classic get such an almost textbook victory there? I mean, Classic basically played that game with a really simple game plan, which is one thing I really love when you see players do this. It's, I'm going to wait till your army moves out. When that happens, mm -hmm. I'm going to warp an Adepts. I'm going to mm -hmm. kill a bunch of your stuff. If you don't take, a, if you don't win the fight, you are so far behind already. And then he just kept doing it. I'll wait for your army to move out. Mm -hmm. As soon as it moves out, I'm going to kill your army. Mm-hmm. I'm going to kill you all your workers, mm -hmm. but your army's already here, so you're going to try to take a fight, and you lose the fight, and now you're even more behind. And he just kept doing it, kept doubling down on that. Well, I think uh, when you're ahead, you should get more ahead. If you're behind, I guess you should also get more ahead, because getting more behind in the form of attacking all the time definitely didn't work out for Ryung. We'll see how that ends up, but in the meantime, we are going to... Uh, be going to a commercial break here in just a moment. While that's getting queued up, some of you may be wondering what Classic will win if he takes the next three games. If you travel over to Mascherino, you can check it out. A chat mod's gonna link it to you soon. We're currently at $80, but if we have two stretch goals, we hope to reach. Firstly, if we reach $175 in donation, we're going to do a Reddit Ask Me Anything with a winner covering your most pertinent questions. We've had some great interviews so far. A chat mod's gonna link you to that as well. In case you wanna check it out while we go on break, we'll be back in two minutes. I'll see you soon. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.